Hey, it's Wabbit. Good to be back with you. So welcome to the 70s. Uh, I'm just saying that because of the paneling behind me. You might notice the walls down here in the basement of the new digs. And I want to spend just a few moments talking with you before I kind of get into the meat of the video, really to give uh, set the stage for what I'm trying to accomplish, the goal, the story, whatever you want to say, and put a few little disclaimers out there, uh, maybe save you some time from not even having to watch this video. Uh, so basically what I'm trying to accomplish or what I wanted to accomplish is being able to move through the house uh, and have the iPhone automatically switch to the strongest network. And I believe on Android, again, based on what I read on the Internet, and we all know everything on the Internet is accurate, so if I'm wrong on this, please correct me. But I, I believe with Android, there are apps you can use to do that automatically. On the iPhone or if you have an iPad or MacBook, that doesn't work. Um, whatever you're connected to, it doesn't automatically switch to the next strongest signal. So I was trying to find uh, some way to work around this and found it. Uh, I don't know how I found it. I don't even know, remember the site. Uh, it's just one of those things you just kind of look and look and look and find, and thankfully found this workaround. And it was, it was in a form, and I wanted to put it in a video format to hopefully help others. Now, so that's kind of the first disclaimer. If you have an Android, then there's really no reason to, to do this. Uh, or if you're not really needing to do what I'm trying to do in terms of, you know, running multiple Wi-Fi points and, and have the strongest connection. Or um, the other thing, and I'll get into this later on in terms of the caveats. So if you're dealing with printers, cameras, things that operate on a 2.4 gigahertz, or I'll give you another example of where I kind of had to do a, a little bit uh, additional troubleshooting. So, uh, and then finally, I, I'm not tech support. What I mean by that is when you do these type of videos, it's not uncommon to get the question, hey, I want to do this and I've got this set up. I, I'm not trying to avoid it. I just don't know enough about tech and all those things to give you a proper answer. So my recommendation is do what I do or do what I did, just use Google that's your friend, do some research, but hopefully there's something in here that might help you. All right, so what I wanna do is take you over to the uh, first kind of a setup, then I wanna take you to the second router uh, and then show you where you have to, what you have to do in terms of logging in. Now please understand that each router is going to have, or modem router, whatever you wanna call it, what you're going to see when you log in is look, going to look different. Um, so your mileage is going to vary based on what you have. But there are some basic things that you can, can use. So let's go ahead and head over to the, the first one and go from there. All right. So here is the router that's down in the basement. So we've got the fiber coming into this router. Ethernet cable is going into the modem router. So this is actually uh, uh, Wi-Fi capable. So basically internet coming from outside into here. And then these four additional ports, I can take those anywhere that I want to kind of extend them. So again, you've got Wi-Fi here. So down here in the basement, the Wi-Fi signal is perfect. But again, I chose to put it down here because I work from home. Um, now, these are the ports just, just for, in case you're curious, the red one here, this is like a 30 foot ethernet cable that's going behind me to a splitter um, that I've got split out. I think it's like an eight splitter uh, hub. So I can basically hook up all my other devices that I need to. This cable here, this is a flat ethernet cable. And this is running along the ceiling all the way upstairs to the second router. Now, the other thing that you'll wanna do, I'm not gonna show you here you know, the, the picture of this, but on each router, modem router, these, you're going to have a label or a sticker, typically. And what it's going to have is your address, and it's going to say something like 192 dot whatever. That's what you're going to punch into your browser. And then it also will have your password on there as well, too. So you need those two things to get into 
the console that I will um, show later on. Now the other thing, and don't quote me on this, I've tried it both ways. Um, I've logged into it with you know, the computer using the ethernet and Wi-Fi. When I first did this years ago, when I was expanding my Wi-Fi through the house on that ground floor, I just hooked up ethernet cable to the laptop because that's what I had read. So this is downstairs. I'll take you upstairs uh, how that one is. All right, so I'm upstairs and here is the router that I have up here. Here is the flat ethernet cable, again, coming from downstairs. And then again, I've got the four other ports, same concept. So this blue one is going up to the TV. I've got three other ports. I could run these to a device or just run them to the house. And in theory, I could hook up another uh, if I had another uh, router modem, I could do the exact same thing and kind of daisy chain them. But that's pretty much what this is up here. And this also has Wi-Fi built in as well, too. All right, now let's go and get into the console of really where you have to have everything set up. All right, so I'm going to try and make this one super quick. I'm going to go very super high level because I can really get into the weeds. So basically... You take the address that I mentioned that's on your router and the, you put that address here in your browser uh, bar like you would do for any web address. You just do the 19.2, whatever it is. Then when you hit enter, you're going to be presented with a login screen. That's where you put in your admin username and your admin password. And again, based on what you have, yours will look different. And basically, here are this is what you need to do. You want to create the same network name, also known as SSID, on both routers. So in my case, downstairs and upstairs, they share the exact same network name. I also gave them the same password. And then finally, for the operating channel. Both routers, they need to be on different operating channels. Now... Hopefully, again, if you're, if you're going to go with this situation, hopefully one of your routers allows you to change the operating channel. The one here in the basement, this uh, graphical unit, excuse me, this console does not allow me to. Fortunately, the one upstairs allowed me to. So I hope that doesn't happen in your particular situation. And that's it. So again, network name needs to match on both routers password, and then operating channel should be different on each one. So what happens in theory is when I'm downstairs, I'm connected to this network name down here. Then I go upstairs, the phone switches to the IP address. That is the workaround that you're doing. And I tested it by opening up my Wi-Fi settings clicking on the info and I can see the IP address and then I as I moved through the house it basically switched to the the IP address so that that's it there are a couple little gotchas that I ran into and I just want to share this with you um, so you don't go down this potential rabbit hole of messing things up and really it's when you're dealing with um, uh, the IOTs, Internet of Things. So things like I talked about earlier, printers and security cameras in my case because they run off the 2.4 gigahertz. Um, long story short, when I got everything set up, I have um, someone else that needed to print from upstairs. They were on the Wi-Fi network that was on the router upstairs. They were on that 2.4 and they could not find the printer. So I had to basically turn off the 2.4 down here and leave it on upstairs, keep the same whole naming convention, different operating channels, and it works great upstairs. For me, I have to basically, the printer that I have allows me to broadcast a printer Wi-Fi, and then if I want to print from down here, I have to log into that printer Wi-Fi. It's completely separate from the Wi-Fi that comes off of the routers. That's as, that's as deep as I'm going to get. My, my, my big takeaway for you is if you've got a lot of IOTs or you have a lot of devices, you've got security cameras, you've got printers, you've got LEDs, you've got anything that operates off, you know, smart lights, et cetera, the, the more you have, 
just proceed with caution because if you start making changes in here, you could potentially mess some things up. And then if you've got other family members that rely on printers, it becomes a bit of a, a, a hassle. And it wasn't really a hassle for me. I had to kind of, you know, figure some things out and I got it working. Um, but just again, if it's too much to mess with, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe look at getting, you know, maybe you have better luck with a range extender, maybe meshes your, your, your way to go. Um, but for me, I was really trying to go with the theory of, Hey, if I've got something here, let's make it work. Um, so it's a bit of MacGyvering, um, but it works. Um, there are a lot of ways to do the things that I'm doing. This is just one way that I did. This is not, <laughs> this is not the only way. I, I please need you to understand that this is not the only way. I guess the only other thing that I would mention that I'm not really too concerned about is in terms of coverage throughout your house. We all have different size houses and we all have different materials. So for me, I have found a few little spots where it's kind of like that in-between. So here's the example. If I'm watching a YouTube video and I'm in one particular location of the house where it seems to kind of maybe in, be in-between potentially the, the Wi-Fi signals, it'll like pause for a second and then it'll play. And if I move a little bit. So again, that's where I leave it up to you. And, and that's one of the things. There's, there's a bunch of apps you can use to kind of you know, check your signal. You can walk through your house. We're starting to kind of get outside of the territory of what I'm really trying to accomplish here in this video for you. So I hope something in here helps you out as my cat is over here picking on the carpet. So apologize for the background noise if you hear that. Um, I tried to do the best that I could to talk you through things at a high level because this can get very technical. Give it a shot and uh, hopefully it works out for you if you try it. That's all I got. Thanks for watching. Hope something in here helped you. And uh, please be safe. Get out there. Have a lot of fun. And we'll catch you next time. Take care.